My name is Dr. Jason Furtado, Assistant Professor in the University of Oklahoma's School of Meteorology. In this video, I'll introduce the concept of dynamical downscaling. The Earth's climate system is made up of multiple complex interactions between the atmosphere, the ocean, and the land surface. Simulating these interactions and studying their impacts on climate change in the past, present, and future requires sophisticated global climate models, or GCMs, that solve many physical equations describing these interactions. These equations have to be solved grid box by grid box, oftentimes with solutions from one grid box impacting those in another. Determining how many grid boxes we want in the model requires a tricky balance between accurately representing the important physical processes of the Earth's climate system and the real-world constraints to the computational power needed to solve equations in more grid boxes. As you've learned in other videos in this series, for those who want to know what climate change has in store for a specific country, state, or even a city, GCM grid boxes are just simply too large. This is where downscaling comes into play. The term downscaling means just as it sounds. Scientists take model output calculated on a large scale and reduce it, or downsize, that output to a smaller scale. One common method to perform this transformation is called dynamical downscaling, in which GCM output is translated to smaller scales using another higher resolution dynamical model called a regional climate model, or RCM. The spatial extent or the domain of the regional model is chosen such that it is large enough to capture important weather processes in the region of interest, like cold fronts or the sea breeze, but making sure that the areas of interest are far enough from the boundaries of the model. For example, if you were interested in the future climate of Oklahoma, you might choose a regional model domain encompassing the entire Great Plains. The process of dynamical downscaling begins with the global simulation which provides time-varying boundary conditions for the regional climate model at all edges of its domain. Next, the regional model runs and simulates the same atmospheric and surface interactions as the GCM does, but at a smaller grid box size within its domain. Finally, the RCM output is then analyzed for information about climate change within the region of interest. Note that the process of dynamical downscaling is typically a one-way street, from the GCM to the RCM. That is, the results of the GCM run directly affect the regional model output, but the regional model does not impact the global model. However, efforts are underway now to make this process a two-way street, whereby the GCM can receive the regional model's output and use it for further processing. Dynamical downscaling has several distinct benefits for studying climate change. First, regional climate models capture smaller scale features that are important for a particular regional climate better than the global model. These features commonly include the effects of mountain ranges and valleys, cities, vegetation, and even rivers, lakes, and ocean inlets. Second, dynamical downscaling allows us to produce high-resolution projections from a climate model where there may be few or no observations. Although, this can be a downside as well, since there may be limited opportunities for us to verify the model. Third, unlike statistical downscaling techniques, regional climate models are based on physical and dynamical principles of the climate system, which means that their results are physically consistent and new extremes in the climate system can result from the mathematical equations. But no procedure is without disadvantages. First, regional climate modeling is computationally expensive. That is, it requires a large amount of computing power and resources. Second, all models have errors or model biases within them. These biases include incorrectly simulating features of the climate system, such as the position of the jet stream, the climatological temperature and rainfall in a certain location, or specific phenomena like El Nino. Using a regional climate model now introduces new biases that have to be evaluated and compensated for when analyzing the output. Also, by using boundary conditions from the GCM, Model biases from the GCM itself creep into the regional model simulations, further complicating the analysis. 
Finally, regional climate models and global climate models may suffer from what we call boundary issues, problems at the interface between the global climate model and the regional climate model. This issue arises because of the one-way interaction between the GCM and the RCM, leading to mismatches or unrealistic values of atmospheric variables like moisture or temperature at the RCM boundary. Overall, dynamical downscaling is a key technique used by climate scientists and modelers to simulate the local impacts of climate change using already available GCM simulations. These regional climate model experiments are very useful for city, state, and regional decision makers who may not get enough information from global models because the grid boxes are far too big. Scientists continue to work on ways to represent better small-scale phenomena like thunderstorms and sea breezes in regional climate models. As such, the next set of models being developed for the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change's sixth assessment report should offer a step forward in the dynamical downscaling world and allow us to make more informed evaluations of climate change for more specific and targeted locations.